To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Another by one of my favorite philosophers, Ralph Waldo Emerson. This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. Over my career, I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders in every kind of organization. People who are committed to closing the gap between their own values and those of their organization and how they show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. So I want to look at what it takes to take a stand, to speak up for the truth as you see it. Now, I covered some of this in the last episode on courage. So if you haven't listened to that, you might want to go back and have a listen. But there we were talking about speaking up when you feel that you might have been wronged. Now we're talking about what does it take to speak up when you see something out there in the world that doesn't meet the standards that you set with your values. On a personal level, speaking up is challenging for most of us because it can cause conflict. It can make us unpopular. I see two different circumstances where speaking up really matters. One is where personally you feel you are being wronged or abused or being taken advantage of. And I talked about that in the episode before. The other is where you just believe that something is wrong and that it needs to be addressed. And so then I think you're speaking on behalf of others, maybe on behalf of customers or on behalf of some employees or other people who you feel are being mistreated or perhaps on behalf of the environment. But something triggers your own values and you know it's just not right. So then do you speak up? Do you become a champion of a cause? And I don't mean complaining to your friends and, you know, just having a gossip about how something just isn't right, but actually taking a stand and doing something about it, because it's then that you're seen to be really authentic and to make that difference and to act on your values. As I'm recording this episode, I've recently been watching The young Scandinavian girl, 16 years old, she is Greta Thunberg, and just been inspired by her willingness to take a stand for the planet and for the future of her generation and their ability to live on it. And she's started a movement. She's got top government officials listening to her. What courage, what a clear set of values. So what does that take? What would it take for you to start your own movement on whatever it is that you feel you want to stand for, the legacy that you want to leave in your work? Firstly, you need to hold that value strongly enough to be willing to be unpopular, to put things at risk, to be disliked by your boss or your colleagues. As you know, if you've listened to other episodes, I have a strong value of learning And I am prepared to be unpopular on that. I'm prepared to keep going back and to be seen by other people about being too negative and not just being excited about what we did well, because I do always want to find out how we could have done it better and what did we do badly. And even if people get defensive about that, I will keep going. Because when I don't do it, I feel bad inside. I know that I've walked away from something that I think is really important. And I'm not building a culture that stands for that. So that tells me that the value that I have on learning is stronger than my need to be liked. You know, I've often wondered what it is that sustains Jehovah's Witnesses when they go door to door continually and get so often and continually rejected. And I reached the conclusion that in the end, if you value, if you believe in something strongly enough, you will handle those kind of rejections. So taking that to a much more mundane level at work, if there is something that you do really believe in and you're prepared to take a stand on that, yes, you will get some rejections, but you also get that very good feeling inside, which comes from knowing that you were being values-driven. 
And what I mean by that warm feeling inside is, have you ever found a wallet in a street and picked it up and rifled through the cars and realized that there was an address there? So you were able to hand it in to the police or ring somebody up because you found their business card. And how grateful the person is, of course. But you know that kind of, there's a sort of warm, oh, I'm quite a good person feeling. And, and I kind of do get a kick out of that. I think there is something deeply satisfying about being values driven, which for me does substitute for some of the perhaps needs driven, ego driven things that one has to give up in order to do that. But I'm putting those two things in front of you because that's, I think, a choice that you have to make as you explore this for yourself. So the stronger the value is, the easier it becomes because it becomes bigger than your own ego. It becomes bigger than your need to be safe or to be liked or to be secure or to have the right amount of money. And so we've come full circle. The more values driven you are, the more authentic and more credible and more able to make a difference. And the more you do that, the better that starts to feel and the more it becomes more important than the other ego needs. And that is the personal development journey that this series on values has been intended to explore. So the exercise I'd like to do to conclude this series really has to be, what are those values for you? And why do they matter to you? What can they deliver to other people, to your company, your community, your customer, your family? And do you care enough to put aside some of those personal needs, to sacrifice some short-term profit or some social acceptability? And how can you take steps to test that and to see if you can emerge with a new set of profitability, a new set of social relationships, which are based around those values? And then finally, what is a stand you can take and how would you do that? And if you do find that position, where you can take a stand and contribute to that change, then make sure you broadcast it as well. Why did you take that stand? Why the sacrifice? Because that education is a part of the role of the leader. So I wish you really well in this values adventure, this values journey. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>